Я приветствую вас как организатор экзамена евро Юро экзамен в городе Екатеринбурге. И сейчас я обратилась к главе представительства Юро экзамен в России. Это Кис Вотс, который в рамках серии вебинаров об обучении чтению, начиная с самых азов, с техники чтения до международных экзаменов. Это серия вебинаров, которые я читаю, вот как раз на платформе компании Конгрессно-выставочного центра. И здесь вы можете получить, сами распечатать сертификат о том, что вы слушали этот вебинар. И также зарегистрироваться на последующие вебинары, которые у нас будут как по этой теме, так и по другим темам развития навыков речевых при обучении английского языка, английскому языку. А сейчас я предоставляю слово Киту, который изначально вам расскажет именно в фокусе у него будет чтение, но также и расскажет об остальных экзаменационных требованиях. Okay, so I, I give the floor to Keith. You're welcome, Keith. Ah, thank you very much, um, Natalia, for that introduction. Well, today we are going to very much be speaking about reading and its relevance in international English examinations. We've got a chat box open, and I'm going to get you to use that a lot during this um, about an hour and 20 minutes or so. And I've got a question for you. And that is, why do we read? Give that some thought a moment and any answers, just pop them on the chat box. I'd be interested to see your comments. Great. And whilst you're doing that, I'm just going to do a introduction as to me, who I am, what I am, and what do I do. I'll just ask Natalia if she would kindly slide her cursor off the slide again for me. That would be a great help if she would. <clears throat> But a little bit about me first. My role in Russia very much concerns international English exams and English teaching. I travel right through from Moscow and probably uh, Smolensk is, um, to the west, right out as far as Blagoveshensk to the east, working with probably around about 1,200 to 1,500 students and candidates every year. In addition, I do an amount of lecturing and teaching across Russia. Um, I think we've fixed the connection problem now, um, Elena. Um, I think someone actually turned me off, in truth. So, because we are doing exams, security is a big thing. And for that, I'm going to owe you a bit of an apology. Because as examination secretary and head of the organization that runs international exams across Russia for Euro exam, I have to sign for the papers. These exam papers should have been delivered yesterday to me, but couriers in Britain are no better than couriers anywhere else in the world, and they are now likely to turn up today. And the couriers have said that the papers should be with me somewhere between about 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock. My job, I will have to go and sign for those if you hear a, a ring, and that's me being called. So I apologize, it will only take about a minute and a half. I will do it as quickly as possible. 
So whilst I've been talking, I've also been looking through some of your answers um, to the question. And of course, the question was, why do we read? Some of you get information to learn things, see things through people's eyes, just for the sheer pleasure of it, to enjoy the language. Absolutely, Anastasia. Um, but generally, we're reading for one of three purposes. And we can break it down. We're either doing it for sheer pleasure. We're not doing it for any other reason. It might be a wonderful novel. We might be reading for instructions. We men are very bad at reading instructions. We put things together and then wonder why it doesn't work. But overall, we are, might be reading for instructions. How to get somewhere. What time does the train leave or the plane leave? And we might be reading for information. And that is reference works. We might be looking up um, the third conditional and looking at its definitions. We might be reading a dictionary for information. There's all sorts of reference works we might be reading. So the next question I've got is, what might we read for? And that's a bit of an ambiguous question. So I'm going to give you the answer straight away on that. We might be looking at a, we go to the airport, we pick up a magazine. Very quickly, we scan that for gist. Do we like the magazine? Do we like the articles? What's in there? Do I want to buy it? No, I don't. It's boring. And it's done very quickly for gist. We might be looking at something for specific information. So again, back to me at the airport. Um, I'm flying out to Moscow on Monday. Back to me at the airport. What time does the Air Brussels flight leave for Moscow? What time does the gate open? So specific information. I might be reading something much more detailed. One of my hobbies is cycling. So I might be reading a whole article trying to find ways of going faster. Now, you might say I'm looking for specific information, and that would be true. But I'm also reading it for detailed understanding. Or I might be looking, reading something, if it's a political article, for example, the implications behind it. So the suggestions and the ideas are actually behind the words. So that's a reader as me. But I would suggest that the language learner has something slightly different in addition to those. They might also be reading for, to understand register. You know, how is that article or piece of prose different from the one of writing a letter to a friend? They might be trying to understand the style of language, the grammar, the words. They might also, of course, be using reading to undertake other exercises. So they might be reading a task that actually refers to a grammar exercise you've set them, for example, in a gap fill. And of course, reading aloud is wonderful and very valid speaking practice. So the language learner probably reads for more than I might um, as a native speaker, certainly in my own language. So reading is much more than just an academic exercise. And this is important because we have to, as teachers, motivate the students and create an environment where they want to read. And particularly reading, we also develop it. And we often forget this. I certainly do in non reading tasks. So you give a student a listening task, but they're actually reading the questions. We think of it as a listening exercise, but for the student, it is also very valid reading skills. For example, we're doing something in the classroom on maps and places. We're based in Russia. We know where Russia is. We don't need to put that on the map. But not only are we labelling UK, France and Spain, our students are reading UK, France and Spain on the map. <laughs> we might be playing a game, a who am I game. And this is great for developing WH questions. Where do you live? Who am I? Are you old? How old are you? How old am I in this case? Um, and the answer to that one, in case you're wondering who stuck a name on uh, one of our royal family's head, it was David Beckham was the name um, on William's head there. So we might be using it as 
very much a speaking exercise. We're certainly using it for developing positions. Just occasionally, my system for some reason disconnects. We're back on, I hope. Um, just someone um, ping me a yes if just you can hear me. My system for some okay reason disconnects. Moment, we're back on, fantastic. Um, just I'll someone um, ping me a yes if you can um, hear me. Okay, thank you very much, moment. everyone. That would be fantastic. Um, so we might be using oh, it for positionals, but we're also reading supermarkets, um, wonderful. Shop. Thank you very much, um, everyone. Bank. Um, so we might be using it for positionals, but we're also reading supermarkets. than watching me, I might be tempted to turn off my camera in a minute. Theatre. Focus so much on the side. And I very much encourage you, rather than watching me, I can. might be tempted to turn off my camera. You might also be reading. Focus very for, much on the slides. Um, Get that full screen exercises. if you now, absolutely let's can. Let's have a look at this one. I'm just going to. We zoom might also be going to do reading quite a lot for um, grammatical exercises. Now, let's have a look at this one. I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to.